My name is Kathy Martinez. I am a nutritionist here at the WIC office. And um, we have two recipes for you today. One is uh, perfect roasted chicken, and uh, it is a whole chicken. And the other is African rice and beans. So I did want to get started with on the, the chicken. This is about a three pound chicken. And on it, um, what we're, all we're gonna do is just wash it off and then um, pat it dry so that whenever I do go to put the, um, uh, the butter and the ingredients on it, then it will um, adhere to it a little bit better. And the other thing I wanted to let you know about before I wash it is um, whenever you do get a turkey or a chicken that's whole, you're gonna find that it has this inside so if you've never opened up or uh, done a whole chicken yourself, just realize that this is okay. There's nothing wrong with this. All this is is the, the neck and the gizzards and the, the liver. And you can still uh, eat this. Make sure whenever you're washing anything like this, especially chicken, um, you don't want to get it spread all over the place. So that's why I tried to keep it here at the at the sink. And you can, since these napkins are already here, I'm going ahead and use them, but you can go ahead and pull your napkins out and then just dry it a little bit. You're gonna want it a little bit dry because whenever you go to put your butter and flavoring mixture on it, if it's too wet, it's not gonna stick to it. Okay, so while Kathy is preparing the chicken and patting it dry, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Andrea Cullins, and I am also one of the nutritionists here at the WIC Clinic. Today's cooking class theme is around the world. While Kathy is finishing up, I am going to be the one to discuss African cuisine and the different spices, herbs, and items traditionally used in their dishes. Starting with a common household uh, staple that you might already have, rice is worldwide, it's a worldwide favorite. Jollof rice is perhaps one of the most widely known foods that originated in Africa. It began in Nigeria and is considered to be a traditional meal accompanied by a meat. Today, Kathy is going to use a basmati rice, which is commonly used in jollof rice recipes. The rice that is used is considered to be a long grain rice. This rice has a wonderful flavor and is very fragrant. The grain gives off a very nutty smell and also pairs well with other spices and herbs added to it as well. Another household staple that you may already have on hand is gonna be the stop cubes, also known as bouillon. Stop cubes are just dehydrated versions of liquid stock. It's used in various African recipes such as soups, rice, beans, plantains, etc. African recipes such as soups, rice, and beans and plantains go well together Scotch bonnets are also traditionally used in these recipes, and you can see them a lot in a lot of Jamaican cuisine. Most African foods or cuisines are sometimes mixed with local crops or wild spices. The spices are commonly used are curry, powders, garlic powder, nutmegs, turmeric, and cloves. Peanuts called ground nuts in Africa are used as a garnish in soups or meat dishes to create a unique flavor. All right, so next I'm going to put over to Kathy. She's going to season the chicken. So all I'm going to do is just pull the butter out. And like I said, this one is salted butter. This right here is what the chicken bouillon cube looks like. And so I've just crushed some up um, with a knife and then uh, put it in here. So if this is a, like this right here, I've had it sitting out but it's not very soft. So I'm just gonna put it in the uh, microwave on defrost just for a couple of seconds to soften it up. It doesn't need to be melted, but it does need to be softer so that we can put all of these things in there. And you can see how much it already softened it up. And it already even left some that was, um, had already turned to the liquid part of it, but that's okay. And in this recipe, it does say that you can put the, uh, uh, pepper and salt on it 
I'm just going to mix it all in here with this. It's two teaspoons of the chicken bouillon, and it says powder. Um, substitute, or you can substitute with the stock cubes. Now, whenever I was looking up for the chicken bouillon powder, it is um, saltier than even regular uh, bouillon cubes. So I just, you know, these are easy and more convenient to have, and you can use them for all kinds of recipes. And so I just cut up that myself. And that's the garlic powder. And then we're gonna do the parsley. And that's a teaspoon. And then the basil. And then the dried rosemary. The next thing was the um, red pepper flakes, and you can put that in here also. Like I said, I didn't want my that pot, so I'm not gonna use those. I am going to go ahead and cut up, before I do that, cut up the an onion. You don't have to have the whole onion unless you want it in there, you can. But this one was a little bit bigger. You can have a smaller onion to do. As a matter of fact, I can use this one. And I just like to cut the ends off myself. And then all I'm doing is just kind of cutting this in little pieces because afterwards, after I'm done putting that on, then I'll just stuff this in there. So the same with with this uh, with the celery, it is just to pull it off of there and then um, wash it. This recipe just calls for one large celery stick, and then you can just cut it into three pieces because we'll put that in there as well. Whatever you have left over, you can cut it up, use it for um, soups or stews. It will add a lot of flavoring to that. Bring this over here, and I'm just going to put my hands in it so I don't have my rings or my watch on. And I'm just going to spread it on there. And then you can open it up. And then I'm just going to put the rest inside here. And I'm just going to put all of this inside here. And the good thing is if your chicken was kind of getting a little flat there, it's going to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we're completed with this, you can see what um, what it looks like, and put this in the oven. The other thing that I noticed with this um, recipe, it had a good uh, rule to follow when roasting a chicken. It is to roast for about 15 minutes per pound at 425 degrees. Um, Okay, so I'm back again with another interesting fact. So you may have heard of a food called fufu. It's a very popular item on TikTok right now, and people from all over the world are trying it out for the first time. Fufu is an essential food in most of West Africa. It refers to a dough being made from boiled potatoes or plantains, white yams, and sometimes even both. Places in Cuba, Jamaica, and Puerto Rico have their own versions too, made with sweet plantains, and animal fats such as butter or bacon. 
I hope you learned some interesting facts today and enjoyed this part of it. I'm gonna go over to Kathy and she's gonna go ahead and cook the, the rice that we talked about earlier today. I'm just gonna take that part of it off. You don't have to really take the end. There's nothing on the end. And then I'm just going to slice it. And this knife is very sharp. So just be careful whenever you're using a knife to cut. And really, even whenever it says dice, it's really up to you how big uh, the pieces and chunks that you like in your recipe or in your items, you can do it however you like. So I know I've got several things out, but it's gonna go pretty, pretty fast. Um, we'll heat the uh, saucepan with the oil. It does call for either red, palm, or canola oil. I just happen to use canola oil, so I'll be using a um, fourth of a cup. It tells you on the side of it that a half of a, a teaspoon is approximately one clove of garlic. So it tells you there on the side of this, that's why I like to get these because it's already cut up. You can smell it in here. And then we can already uh, add our thyme, which is half of a teaspoon. And then the uh, paprika. And then of course, this is where you would add the, the hot pepper. But we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of the, the cayenne. And that's only a fourth of a, a teaspoon. Saute it for about a minute. We've already done that. Now I'm going to add the tomatoes that we did already. Already diced up. I'm going to go ahead and use this bouillon cube. And I'm just going to kind of cut it up a little bit. So, And then all I'm going to do is just fill it up to here and kind of let that dissolve in there. And if it doesn't, that's okay, because whenever you put it in here, it's going to finish. And we're just going to stir in the rice and uh, leave it in there for a couple minutes. And it says to keep stirring it just so that it doesn't uh, burn. So the next thing that I ask for is to go ahead and put the beans in there. Now, I count for some of the liquid from this, just because I want some of that flavor to be in there. So we'll this in here. The broth and the, the water mixture. Like I said, even if the it hasn't dissolved yet, that's okay because it will in here with the heat. You just bring to a boil and then uh, reduce the heat and just simmer until the rice is cooked and it's for about 18 minutes um, and then you adjust, adjust for salt or pepper to taste and it does say that you have to stir um, occasionally to prevent from any burns. Okay, so while that is simmering, so it can thicken up a little bit, I do have a few quick reminders for our clients. Um, if you haven't um, downloaded our app, you can download it on your WIC app. It's called Texas WIC, it's located in your app store. If you haven't updated your app, you may need to uninstall your Texas WIC app and reinstall it on your phone so you can have the latest um, shopping guide booklet as well on there. Also, if you can, like us on Facebook and visit texaswick.org for other recipes and cooking videos. Call the WIC clinic if you have any questions regarding your next appointment or benefits. If you have changed your address, phone number, or just had your baby, please call the WIC clinic so we can update your profile. And you can see here that it's still in juice. So if you wanted to save that juice and make a gravy from it, you can do that. Or I just left it all in here so that it would make sure that it kept the chicken moist. And then you can see inside where it has the onions and the celery inside. So I'll touch 
plate this up so you can see the the rice and the tomatoes and thank you for uh, joining us with the African rice and beans and then also with the um, roasted chicken and um, I hope you try this recipe at home or vary it to what your uh, needs are or what your flavor um, and taste are and um, have fun. Thank you. Thank you.